Hey everybody, it's Dr. Peasley. It's Sunday school time. So let's get started under with our everyday prayer. Jesus, gentle shepherd, guide my feet today. Keep me in thy footsteps. Never let me stray. Give me an open heart and mind to permanently stay in thy word as I worship you today. Teach me how to keep my spirit and my body clean as humble children ought to be, so I may dwell with thee eternally. Amen. And also, on Saturday, August 29th, 2020, at 10 a.m., our next Sunday School lesson will take place. It will be on live Zoom, so we need you to tune in on Saturday, August 29th, 2020, at 10 a.m. for your next Sunday School class. Let's go forward. Today's lesson is found in St. James 3, 1 through 12. This is lesson 12. We're still dealing with wisdom, and the title of our lesson is Watch What You Say. Also, we want to talk today about taming the tongue. Listen to this. Those who control their tongues can also control themselves in every other way. Our lesson will be read from the International Children's Bible. Let's move forward. It's story time. Your tongue is a weapon that can be used for good and evil. The spoken word can spread love and hate, truth and lies, even in our own households. Although no one is perfect, to be more Christ-like, you should only use words that are good from the tongue. Too often, we lose control and use our words for evil, said Pastor Smith. Can anyone give an example of someone in history that used their power of their words positively? Gabby raised her hand. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Yes, said Pastor Smith. Dr. King used his words to bring about positive change. His powerful words are remembered, taught, and still resonate today. There's another person that used their words for positivity, and his name is John Robert Lewis. And he marched with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. when he was 17 years old, and he just recently died. He was a civil rights leader, just like Martin Luther King Jr. And also, he was a congressman for the United States. People listened to him and believed in his message. His teachings spread like wildfire and gave people hope and strength to stand up for themselves in a respectful manner. Now, who can give an example of how people use their words negatively? Some people think that they are better than others. So they say and do things that are unfair, such as calling a certain group of people bad names, said Randall. Yes, Randall, it's true. Unfortunately, many people in our world do that. Let's talk about some example of such negativity that we may see nowadays. Students raised their hand and someone said, they are rioting in the streets because of George Floyd's death. The class began to share examples of things they saw in the media. Pastor Smith said, there is extreme power in our tongues. 
and we must try our best to control them and speak life over people and situations. Then he led the students in prayer. Let's move forward. Question time. When should you use your tongue? I hope you said when you're positively speaking about something, when you're praising someone, and when you're doing something good for someone. Can you think of any examples of how other people use their words positively or negatively? Yes, we just did positively. Negatively, calling someone a name is not good and we should never do that. Let's go on. Let's talk a little bit about the history of the scriptures we will be reading today. Now, we have studied James um, in the last, last Sunday, actually. James was the brother of Jesus. He was born after 6 AD in Nazareth. James had four brothers. We already know about Jesus. And he was the son of Mary and Joseph. Mark. 6 and 3 tells us a little bit about the brothers of James and Joseph. Is this not the carpenter's son, the son of Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? They were talking about Jesus. Jesus is the brother of James. Now, when they were young, they were taught from the book of Proverbs. And James is always known for being just and righteous. Also, he wrote the book of James, and he was a martyr. Anyone know what a martyr is? Yes, is someone who died for the rights that they believe, just like Martin Luther King Jr. He was a martyr. Now let's get into our lesson. St. James 3, 1 and 2 from the International Children Bible. My brothers, not many of you should become teachers. You know that we who teach will be judged more strictly than others. James is saying here that be careful of becoming a teacher of the word because you will be judged more strictly than anyone else. You will be held accountable for what you teach God's people. And also, we should keep in mind that Luke 12 and 48 says, too much is given, much is required. Verse two, we all make mistakes. If there were a person who never said anything wrong, he would be perfect. He would be able to control his whole body. So what is James saying here? He goes on to say, none of us are perfect but we should be very careful about what we say. He says, don't use words that will hurt others. Words are your character and people believe you by your character. Using bad language like cursing, and I know we don't do any of that, is not a good thing to do. Lying and not telling the truth, not good. He says, yes, we do make mistakes, but we must be careful and ask God to help us not to make those mistakes. St. James 3, 3 through 5. 
we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we control their whole bodies. It is the same with ships. A ship is very big and it is pushed by strong winds, but a very small rudder controls that big ship. The man who controls the rudder decides whether the ship will go or where the ship will go. The ship goes where the man wants. Verse five, it is the same with the tongue. It is a small part of the body, but it brags about doing great things. A big forest fire can be started with a little flame. These verses are speaking about the power of the tongue. There's a metaphor used here when we're talking about the bit in the horse's mouth and the person that guides the horse in any direction has control over that horse. It doesn't go unless that person used the rings to pull him in the direction he wants him to go. The same with the big ship. We have to be careful about what we say to people because little tiny words can hurt another person. Meaning when you say something bad about a person, they will remember it and you can't take it back. It's the same with the tongue. When you say something and you take, can't take it back, it's wrong. It's very tiny, but it can hurt someone. When you brag about things, when you go onto social media, when you talk about people, those things are wrong. And you have to be very careful because you can cause someone hurt. It's just like the forest fire. There's a small flame, but it can go forever and it'll be difficult to put it out. James 3, 6 through 8. And the tongue is like a fire. It is a whole world of evil among the parts of our bodies. The tongue spreads its evil through the whole body. It starts a fire that influences all of life. The tongue gets this fire from hell. People can tame every kind of wild animal, bird, reptile, and fish, and they have tamed them. But no one can tame the tongue. It is wild and evil. It is full of poison that can kill. James is saying here that we can do a lot of things as human beings like taming animals to do what we want them to do, like birds, but it is very difficult to tame your tongue and you need someone to help you. He's saying you must call on God, our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who will help you control your tongue and not say evil things that will hurt someone else. Verses 9 and 10, we use our tongue to praise our Lord and Father, but then we curse people and God made them like him. Praises and curses come from the same mouth. My brothers, this should not happen. James is saying here that we may have a friend and sometimes we will talk against that friend with other people that we call our friends. We may say bad things about that person, but then when you get back with that person, you're treating them like you never said anything wrong about them at all. And you praise someone in front of them, but behind their backs 
you're talking about them. James is saying that should never happen. And in order for that not to happen, you must ask God to help you. Not be critical of people, not be cruel. Verses 11 and 12. Do good and bad water flow from the same spring? My brothers, can a fig tree make olives? Can a grapevine make figs? No. And a well full of salty water cannot give good water. James is saying that no way should good and evil come from the same place. You should be good all the time. He says, can a fig tree make olives? No, they can't. If you look at the fig tree, it looks like this. When you look at olives, they look like this. They do not come from the same tree. So good and evil should not come from your tongue. We want you to keep in mind this week, praises and curses come from the same mouth. My brothers, this should not happen. You should not call people names, go on the internet and say bad things about them. And then when you're in front of them, you praise them. God does not like that. Your challenge this week is Every day you wake up, read and meditate on Psalms 19 through 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Then consider this scripture before you speak any evil thing out of your mouth. God will help you. Ask him to control your tongue. Amen? All right. Now, that's the end of our lesson today. And we want you to remember, if you would like to get baptized, call the church. And also, don't forget, on Saturday, August 29, 2020, at 10 a.m., we will have our Sunday school class on live Zoom. And we will see you on when? August 29th, which is a Saturday, at 10. If you would like to get baptized at our church, please call 773-373-8500. And remember, as always, Bishop Smith and Sister Smith, thank you for your attendance today. Let's end in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you today for our lesson on watching what we say. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for teaching us how to tame our tongue. And Lord Jesus, we ask that you help us to remember Proverbs 18 and 21 that says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Keep us strong this week and give us self-control. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. See you next time. Bye-bye.